you know, I'm into biohacking. I think it's fascinating. We all want to be the best version of ourselves, the Mamba mentality, the best version of ourselves, which means healthy, happy, um, good mindset. So those things, you know, meditating, grounding, eating clean, exercising, all, you know, cold exposure, hot exposure. These are amazing things. Supplementing at the cellular level to make sure that the cells are optimized are, are amazing things for well-being and productivity and, and anti-aging. And that's something that I think everybody is interested in. No doubt. You know, since the beginning of mankind, everybody wanted to preserve youth and wellness and, and health. So bio, that's what biohacking in general um, encompasses. And I think that now we have an operation that is the ultimate biohacking tool. Because if you think about, you know, Gary Brecca, for example, and human biologists like himself who advocate for cellular optimization. So people that have mineral and vitamin deficiencies and their cells can't behave appropriately, so their home hormones are not um, producing appropriately, there's imbalances, and then that affects down the stream the well-being of the person. You know, if you think about testosterone, for example, testosterone is in man and woman, and besides the primary character, secondary characteristics of what testosterone gives us for hair growth or balding or Adam apple, um, development and all these things, it's uh, function in telling the bone marrow uh, to produce red blood cells, erythropoietin, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really important in uh, red blood cell development. And that, what red blood cells do is carry oxygen to the tissue. So ultimately, everything we want to do at cellular, at the cellular level, is to make sure down the stream that our cells are. Ox getting oxygen to function appropriately. Right. And all, there's only one, one cause of death. The only cause of death ultimately is the cessation of oxygen. That's the only cause of death. No matter what the death was, whether it was a gunshot or a fall from a building or a heart attack, what actually results in arrest is lack of oxygen. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the primary vital uh, process right is delivery right a heart right. attack is ischemia or lack of oxygen to a heart muscle mm -hmm. so getting good red blood cells and oxygen delivery to the system is biohacking in essence at a level now you can do all that but if your jaws are structurally limiting you from getting great oxygen flow and good sleep. We talk about sleep hygiene is a big biohacking tool, right? Going to sleep early, making sure you get eight hours if you can and getting deep sleep or REM sleep and all these all things. All the biohackers rave about sleep. 100%. And it's the one that they can all never figure out. Yeah. So many of these guys have perfect regiments, but then they're mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, but my sleep is still kind of like, it's okay, I guess. Exactly. I still got to figure exactly, that out. Exactly, because you can do all those things, but you can't, con if there's a structural problem, which we know that for the last 500 years, that's everybody, right? Yeah. Almost everybody has a structural problem. There's going to be a disruption in good sleep and a disruption of oxygen. And in a biohacking tool, you can do everything from the bottom up. You can nutrient give soils um, nutrients, but if you have no sunshine or oxygen from the top, then you're at you're at a standstill, you're not, right. you're not optimized. So um, biohacking in essence, I think of it as a tool. You need both, you need all of it. You need good habits, you need clean eating, you need cellular health, but at the same time, you need to get good oxygen and good sleep. And this is an operation that is really the best tool for that. Yeah, yeah, the, the oxygen intake is the most neglected part of the larger biohacking community. Right. Um, which is weird because like, the human bodies are very similar to like combustion engine in vehicles. Mm -hmm. And if a car isn't functioning well, a, a mechanic who might not even have a college education knows to check just a few things, you know, f fuel, air and spark. Right. Right. It's one of those three things that's causing the car not to function properly. Right. Um, it's almost like cars have their own sort of metabolism. Right. And 
they're, you know, the concept of making sure that the air intake is correct for a mechanic is routine. Right. It's common sense. Common sense. And yet in the medical community, people will, will have these big bodies in these tiny little air intakes. It's like, it's like <laughs> right, exactly. we're walking exam. around with, you know, analogy. Ford F-150s engines, but some people will have a, a Mini Cooper air intake on that. Right. And it's like, right. what do you get? You get, do you get a kind of a, you get sort of a pickup truck functionality, yeah. but at the end it's of the day- something that's gonna crash. It's gonna crash.